Hi there, welcome to NetSpot. This is a bit of software that's been around since uh, 2011, and uh, I think it's made by Etwok Incorporated or something like that, according to Wikipedia. And uh, it's a network uh, Wi-Fi analysis tool, basically, a Wi-Fi uh, analysis and survey tool. Uh, there are various versions. There's a free version, there's a home version, a pro version, and an enterprise version. The pro version comes in around $149, at least that's what it is at the time of recording. The home version is $49, and the free version, funnily enough, is free. However, it does have the obvious limitations with it. I have started using this tool because uh, I've been trying to set up a mesh network in my home. I basically just tweak my Wi-Fi in my home to get as much decent 5G coverage as I can. The property we're in has pretty thick walls. It's an old... Uh, so over, the house is over 100 years old, so it was obviously built pre well, well pre Wi Fi. So um, they, they just, the walls just weren't designed to let Wi Fi through. Houses today have a lot more kind of uh, timber, stud walls, um, and Wi Fi can penetrate that much, much better than um, older houses. So when you're in that scenario, and I think a lot of people blame their router from the ISP, they'll, they'll phone their ISP and they've got the router sat on the floor in the far corner of the house and they say, well, I can't get Wi-Fi here. No, of course you can't because Wi-Fi is just radio and it just is subject to the same interference and drop in signals and, uh, you know, in the frequency 2.4 gig and 5 gig, it no, no, has no ability to penetrate anything. So yeah, you, you're um, subject to all those problems. And the only way around that really is to have multiple nodes i.e. a mesh network or multiple access points across your house all connected to the same network. And that's what I've been doing here anyway. And you can see that in this first section of NetSpot, which is the Discover section. There are two main sections to NetSpot. There's Discover and Survey. I'll, I'll cover the Discover section and the Survey section today. I have done a survey of the property here and I just want to show you the results of those because it's really cool, really geeky, but really, really useful if you're doing this sort of thing. So the Discover bit is available in the free version too. The only thing that isn't is this section here, which is Alias. And this is actually incredibly useful. So, and they know that, right? I mean, they're going to miss it off the main version because it's so useful. You can put an alias against your MAC addresses, basically. So every radio has a MAC address, which is the BSSID here, and therefore having a name against that makes things much much simpler and you cannot do that in the free version so if you've got lots of different access points lots of different radios it gets a bit confusing what we're looking at here is everything that the, my macbook can pick up at the moment where it is it's just looking it's constantly scanning and can pick up pretty much only our stuff which is the cans gw stuff here we have in total six nodes throughout the house so three on the ground floor three on the upper floor and that means 12 radios in total. So six 5 gig radios and six 2.4 gig radios. That's the network as a whole. And that's what we've kind of determined is, is needed to get the sort of speeds we want and the sort of coverage. You can just use three across the top floor, just three on the bottom floor. But when you go into the next floor up, the speeds drop off quite noticeably. And it's, yeah, it's just not what I was after. So got six in total and that's what we're looking at here you can see that the one i'm on at the moment is well i can actually have a look at that on my wi-fi here so i can see that it's 16 ca is the bssid 16 ca and channel 116 which you'll see in here um is 116 so i'm actually on that one at the moment I can see all the stats relating to that. So that is the Studio 5G, which is the room I'm in at the moment. So I would expect to be on that one. It's got a fairly good signal to noise ratio. The, this software looks more at signal to noise than anything else. And that makes sense really, because signal to noise is everything when it comes to radio. You don't have to have the best signal as long as your signal is much higher level than any interference or noise. So that's why signal to noise is important. So you could have a Wi-Fi signal of minus 70 dB. If your noise is down at minus 95 dB, it's a usable signal. So that's why this software pays so much attention to signal to noise. However, you can still see here the signal and the signal percentage. So not the highest one. The higher ones are, of course, the two gig radios because the coverage of two 
uh, 2.4 gigahertz is much better uh, than um, uh, than 5 gig. It just propagates better and it doesn't get blocked by walls quite so much. And so that's why you see really in relation to signal, if I just sort these by signal, in fact, that's just, there we go. If I sort these by signal, you'll notice that the top three here at the moment are all 2.4 gig networks, even though the one I'm on here, which is literally like two meters away, is fourth down, but is the five gig network. Right, good. So you can get, you can get loads of good information from this about how well they're performing, what other, pe what other channels people in the area are using. You can walk around your house, figure out you know how many networks com come in in total. When they come in and then drop out again, they still get left in the list. So you can just get a really good sense of the environment and all the stuff that's going on. The, the pro version shows you hidden SSIDs as well, which is fantastic because a lot of people will hide their SSIDs and you need to know about those radios as well when you're planning which channels to use and um, hopefully your, uh, your mesh network and your routers will be doing that for you. But, um, but if they're not and you're setting that manually, it's good to know which channels you, know, you need, to, need to use so you're not clashing with other people because Wi-Fi is all about kind of sharing, you know, it's about using the band, the, the radio space available in a sensible way. So you're not just blasting on top of everybody else. You're also kind of shifting away from other people's frequencies and, um, you know, because it improves your performance and their performance. So it's a, it's a, you know, a joint effort, really, I suppose, Wi-Fi. Anyway, right, there we go. So this is the first section. This is the Discover section, but we can now go into more details. So I'll go down to the bottom here, click on Details, and we get our signal and noise graph up. And we can display those for any network that we want. So any in this list here, right now I've got one selected, which is the one I'm on. It's giving, showing me my signal is round about 50 dB. It's pretty steady. My noise level is um, down at minus 90 dB. This is just a perfect, this is a great signal, right? This is just wonderful. Um, could be, I guess it could be better as far as noise goes, but it's pretty good. So, you know, the difference between these two is what you want to be paying attention to and that in this case is incredibly good so let's bring another one into it because i know here that i am close to um the room i'm close to the room above obviously but what i mean is that node is one that could potentially serve me in this room as well so really i want a good distinction between those two and that one's miles 5g here so i'm going to select that one as well I want to make sure that there's sufficient signal difference between the two because if they're basically the same one you're potentially using some a, a node that you completely don't need to use and then that's just going to cause more interference you're covering more channels you're not free you know you're covering it for other using channels that other people could be using basically this has to be a suitable diff has to be suitable difference between these in this case we've got about 10 db difference which is it's sufficiently lower in signal to be you know not something that we need to worry about in here if we go bring a device in here it's always going to be using this one at the top well, let's have a look at something a little bit further away so uh the one in hugo's room in fact is that even being picked up at the moment what other ones have we got that we can take a look at well we could bring in a, like a two gig one into here as well so we could say well how much stronger is the two gig network in here quite a bit stronger you can see just a even across the distance of a couple of meters, the two gig does a much better job of covering that, you know, short distance of about two and a half meters from that's between my laptop, my MacBook here, and the uh, the the, the uh, Wi-Fi transmitter in this room. Okay, we've also got tabular data, so all this it can be represented across time and signal levels, and you can export all this. So got all this all this running down here telling you all the information about what happened on the network across time so you could export it and you could map it into graphs yourself if you wanted to. And then you can look individually at the channels being used and the bandwidth they take up. So we'll first start with 2.4 gigahertz here. So there's only one 2.4 gigahertz network selected. So I'm just going to choose that one for now. And you can see that I'm on channel 11 and I'm using 20 megahertz of bandwidth. So this is fairly narrow. This is just standard overlap between channels that you'd expect to see on 2.4 gig if i was using 40 megahertz bandwidth this would be much wider 
here and breaching in and covering more and more channels. The others, I think they're all using the same channel, actually. That's a fix, something that's fixed. So yeah, the different ones, different nodes are all using the same channel. So just bring in another one. Here you can see as we go across, we've got different differing signal levels. But they do sort of merge a lot, the 2.4 gig. I don't really care about that too much because I need to have it enabled to um, to, to have some legacy devices, so heating system and things that don't use 5 gig. So I have to have it enabled. And if, if it wasn't for those, I would just disable it because it's 5 gig that I'm interested in. So this is really good. And you can then also select 5 gigahertz network. So let's just go back to the one I'm on here. Select that one in here and select that network. And you can see that I'm using channel 116, which is up in the DFS region. So dynamic frequency selection region. And I have a bandwidth of 80 megahertz in this case. So there's a lot of coverage right across multiple channels here because I'm using a fair amount of bandwidth and everybody does in order to get speed. You can't, there are two methods really of getting speed with Wi-Fi: use more bandwidth and MIMO. So multi-input, multi-output where you get multiple things transmitting at once to a you know, and then merge them all together at the end. That's the kind of two ways of doing it with Wi-Fi. So yeah, there's the different five gig networks. If I just click on another one, so the one above me, Miles is above me, but he's also on a completely different channel. So the mesh has successfully adjusted the channels to not have them sat on the same frequencies. And uh, even though they, so they, they're close together, but it doesn't matter because they're not interacting with each other at all. So all this stuff is available in the free version of NetSpot. I hope you find this, this interesting. I'll go on to the survey bit now. All this is available in the free version with the exception of Alias, as I mentioned a little bit earlier on this Alias. You can't add that on. Right, so let's just close this down. And let's go into survey now because survey is super interesting. This is just great. I love it. Uh, so I'm going to open a save project, which is one that I did uh, yesterday and today of our property <laughs> You can see my rather rubbish drawing here. I'm just going to um, disable some of these. So it's actually selected every network. So what the survey thing does, you you draw a map, you have a map of your uh, vicinity, you know, your, your property, and you just go to various places, do a scan, next spot, do a scan, next spot, do a scan, and it builds up. And every time it does a scan, it looks at every single network it's picking up and tracks the signal level and various things, uh, you know, noise levels, all that. And it just basically brings all that in. It takes about 30 seconds to a minute to do each one. So it does take a bit of time to build up. And uh, as you do this, you get a decent map of your coverage. But right now I'm looking at every single network it's picked up. So that includes every single house nearby and everything like that. So I'm just going to disable everything for now. I'm not sure if you can just do, if there's a way of just doing the whole lot. I haven't found that yet. So let's just disable these on here. Gosh, there's so many, so many networks. Right, so this is my first, att <laughs> first attempt at a drawing. <laughs> it's like the most rubbish drawing of the house ever. But it, it's enough to give me a guide. It was just to give me a guide. The second one I did was a little bit better. I did a, a second zone to this. So I did um, ground floor and top floor. See, the second one I did was better, right? I mean, come on, give me some credit. That was, this one's a little bit nicer. Uh, so let's go to the ground floor first of all. And one important thing to do is uh, set your scale. So you have a scale of the stuff you're seeing here. You can set this to different colors, uh, but you can, you, you've got the choice if I go into this bottom section here to say, well, what's usable for me? So what's my minimum signal to noise ratio? What's my maximum signal to noise ratio? In fact, no, I'm gonna look at signal level rather than signal to noise in this case. And I'm gonna say, what's my, what, what's the lowest signal I'm interested in? You know, because, in a certain environment, one, you're, the whole Wi-Fi in an environment might not be able to use the same dynamic range, as it were. Um, so the range of signal as is theoretically possible. So a signal of minus 90 dB might be absolutely useless to you. If it is, then maybe you need to set this minimum signal level a little bit higher. But for me, I've sort of set this about, about minus 90. I reckon that if I had a signal of minus 90, it might just be usable. Maximum signal level, well, of course, if you've got it right next to the node, you're probably going to get something like minus 24, minus 20 dB. But realistically, if I've got something that's minus 45, minus 50, to me, 
that is a good solid signal and I'm happy with that but you can adjust that anyway as you go along depends on what, how you want your colors to show really so as I went through the house we've got our living room here we've got a hall uh, we've got the studio here we've got the kitchen here we've got the part of the garden here and downstairs toilet uh, and um, so right now I'm in the studio so if I on the scan here down the left hand side I've got all the, those access points showing to me so I'm interested in five gig studio so what's the coverage of the node in the studio well you can see here that quite obviously it's showing me and I'm going to just take off the paths here because that's a bit distracting it's showing me that the coverage in the studio on five gig is really good in fact I would kind of expect it to be a little bit better than that because I'm sat here and I've got a perfectly good signal so I'm going to just adjust my signal here a little bit bring this down to say 50 dB because I reckon that is about right so really you can see from this really little penetration through to the living room very little penetration through to the kitchen as well it really is just limited to one room and that's why we need so many nodes so uh let's go to kitchen so we've got kitchen coverage here bang so kitchen the extra node in the kitchen gives us that additional coverage we need and we also have one in the living room so this there you go i mean you've got decent five gig coverage across the ground floor with those three nodes unfortunately i didn't do i should have done the garden as a whole but i just didn't do it in this case so that's what the survey thing's for and you've got all sorts of different things that you can look at it's not just signal level it's signal to noise signal to interference it's just noise noise level frequency band coverage access point availability it does all that during the scan and gives you the results that you can go back to at any point and you can export at any point so let's have a quick look at the uh, top floor as well because the map's a lot neater to look I even drew a little toilet here as well so you know this is the bathroom so I drew a little toilet on there exciting hey okay so let's put in what we're going to put in on here so the top floor is the bedroom five gig and you can see that the bedroom yeah you get a bit of leakage out onto this area here which I would totally expect but again this solid brick wall here means that you get very little leaking into Miles's room and virtually nothing at the other end of the house so realistically although you can pick it up at the other end of the house just about it's really not a usable signal there so we have another node uh, in Miles's room that gives coverage for that and we have another one at the end of the house right up here that little this circle here is uh hugo's room so let's bring that in as well and again there we go we got reasonable coverage bit of a drop bit of a sort of weaker area in the bathroom but still totally usable and um that's the point of the survey i hope this all kind of makes sense to you and shows the power of this tool i'm not selling this i've paid for this tool you know i'm not here to just purely promote it or anything i just think it's a really really useful tool and i when i first used the survey i um I was just like wow this is this is great I mean this gives you so much information potentially I mean I, I was pretty much sure that we had coverage anyway but if you if you are setting something up in a in a less familiar environment this kind of thing is just absolutely essential it's really really good so there we are a look at NetSpot and the Discover tool and the Discover Detail tool which is all part of the free version the survey tool is only with the paid versions and if I'm honest I would suggest the pro version because I think the paid version is limited to 10 points and you can do five in one room so if you're doing a whole house like this you really need more than 10 and again the company knows that so they want you to be paying more for the pro version interesting stuff thank you for watching and listening to me waffle on for uh, 20 minutes I hope you like it if you've got any comments or any questions about what, what it can do or how it works or just anything really stick them in the comments and uh, i'll get back to you within 24 hours or so if i can answer it so thanks a lot see you soon